And now I'd like to introduce Melina Lodge, the Executive Director of the Housing Network of Rhode Island. Uh, good afternoon, and, and thank you, Revenue uh, for RI and Senator Alzante, uh, Representative Alzante and Senator Murray, uh, for your leadership on this issue. I think it's really critical, and as the gentleman ahead of me already articulated, there are lots of ways we could spend this money. Uh, my name is Melina Lodge. I'm the Executive Director of the Housing Network of Rhode Island. We represent 17 nonprofit affordable housing developers and community development corporations around this state who build affordable housing for our lowest income residents from Westerly to Woonsocket. Uh, we've been responsible for the production of about 15,000 long-term affordable homes for Rhode Islanders using the last three bonds. Uh, and we're looking forward to adding to that count um, when we get the revenues from the fourth bond spent. Um, I think over the last several years, there's been a notable shift in the public's awareness around the essentialness of housing to our everyday life. And I think for some folks, it took a pandemic uh, to see that stable housing um, is critical to sheltering in place and distance learning and working remotely and staying health and safe, uh, safe and healthy. And without those things, those things are, without housing, those things are virtually impossible, no pun intended. Um, and yet the ability for many Rhode Islanders to secure housing is easier said than done. Every day, at least once a day, I take a call from somebody who is asking for help to find affordable housing and doesn't know where to go. And even when you offer them a phone number, they're told there's a wait list that's years long. And amid all the silly cat videos and cute baby pictures on my social media feed, I can't help but notice that there is a pervasive dialogue among people around why is it so hard to find a place to buy I'm working a good job, but I can't buy anything. Or why is rent for a two bedroom apartment just so dang expensive? And I am actually confident um, that our elected leaders are listening and they're hearing the same things that you and I are hearing because for the first time, I think in a really long time, um, housing has been elevated um, in legislative priorities and our spending plans. And so I think as a housing advocate, I would be lying if I said I wasn't thrilled to be in this moment uh, where our issue is the issue. Um, but I think without a sustainable long-term source of revenue that there isn't a real pathway forward for us to actualize these long-term goals. And building housing is a long-term goal. And, and as the previous speakers already acknowledged, you know, COVID has brought unprecedented levels of federal funding. Uh, to our state and we're grateful for those and the opportunities, but those are one-time investments um, and housing is not. And so we really need revenue that can help spur those investments into the future. And I think the question becomes without additional revenue, how will Rhode Island sustain those investments using the same revenue streams that we already know are inadequate? And the answer is that we can't at least not without having to prioritize between one issue or the other. Um, and I think for a really long time, our state budgets have sounded like housing or education or infrastructure or transportation or workforce support or the environment. And Rhode Islanders actually need all of those things and they need all of them to happen at the same time. Um, so we'd really like this bill to, these bills to pass uh, so that we can start to say, housing and education, housing and transportation and workforce development. Thank you.